In my part I have three islands. I want to create a pocket tool path that's going to clean up all the material down to the top of the islands and then below the top it'll clean up all material around the islands within the boundary. To do that I'm going to select tool paths from the drop down menu then select pocket. I'm going to go to the solid chaining because I'm working with a solid part and first I'm going to chain just an edge. I've already machined down to this level so I'm going to select this geometry down here near the bottom. This will set the depth in Mastercam. Unfortunately we want to go right to this depth but if I check this that'll leave the radius which is 1 16th material on the wall. So I'll select this chain and then later in the linking parameters I'll have to reselect this as the final depth and we're going to use a bull nose cutter so it'll automatically leave this 1 16th radius. So I've selected the first chain I'm now going to select to the loop option and I'm going to chain the top of the islands. It'll tell me is this the reference face I want it? If I select the other face it'll switch but this is the one I want so I'll accept that and again I'll chain the top of each island each time telling it the correct reference face and it's critical I chain the top of the islands because then Mastercam knows how deep it can go until the top of the islands. And below that Z depth it will avoid the islands and go around them. So I've selected the four chains I need. I'm going to accept these selections. It'll take me now into the tool path window. For my tool I'm going to select a half inch bullnose end mill. Once again I'm cutting wood. Most of these are maple and I don't do very many at a time so I'm going to set the speed to 6000. I'm going to set the feed to 250. I'll always enable rapid retract so it comes out quickly out of the pocket. I'll add an appropriate comment. So I'll set up the tool as shown. When I go to the cut parameters it's very important for the pocket type. I tell it it's an island facing which means face the top of the islands. If I wanted at this point I could enable create an additional finish operation but once I accept my tool path if I come back into it by selecting parameters this will be grayed out so it's a one time only chance and what it will do is it will create an additional finish operation with the same tool to remove any stock you leave on the walls and the floors. But once again because I'm working with wood I'm not going to bother and I'm only making a few parts. Now for my overlap on the island facing I'm going to set up 60 percent. The important thing here is that the percentage of the tool overlap so this percentage of tool overlap must be less than the flat at the bottom. Remember it's a bull nose with a 1 16th radius and it's a half inch diameter so our flat size is 3 8 I'll make my approach distance a little smaller I'm not going to leave any stock on the islands as well and I'll make my exit distance about a half inch as well. So next I'll go to roughing. I have many options to choose from. I just want to try and find one that's going to give me the quickest pocket. For now I'm going to choose the constant overlap spiral and once again I'm going to set the step over distance to about 350 as long as it's less than 375. I'm going to make sure it minimizes the burial of the tool. I'll spiral inside to out, that's fine. Especially since I already have a hole in the center. For entry motion, I'll let it helix in, but I can tell it the minimum radius is 75% of the tool, because once again we've already plunged into the center, and the maximum radius is 200% of the tool. Okay. If it fails, I'll let it plunge, because we have the hole there. The rest of these default settings are good. For finishing, I am going to take a finish pass. I'm going to leave 50 thou. I'll let it compensate here in this computer. I want it to finish the other boundary. I might as well start at the closest entity and I'll keep the tool down. There's no point in taking it out of the pocket. And I'll machine the finish pass only at the final depth after I've roughed everything. For my lead in and lead out, I'm going to set the line to zero and make it sweep through a 45 degree radius and I'll copy this over to the exit. You'll notice we have less options with the pocket. 
lead in, lead out than we do with a contour. I'm going to enable the depth cuts. I'm going to set it up to half inch. I want it to take one finish cut. 50 thou depth is fine. Once again, I'll tell it to keep the tool down and I want to turn on use island depths. If I don't enable use island depths, the tool will not cut above the island. I don't want to break through. I'll go to my linking parameters. I prefer them all in absolute. So I'll click on the depth button and now I'll go in and I'll choose an entity at the bottom of the pocket, negative three quarters. We won't worry about this one decimal place here. I'll accept that toolpath. I'll select them all and I'll simulate them to see how they look. So in the verify simulator I'm going to click play. And I'm watching for that it cleans up all the material. There's no little chips or pieces sticking up. If there are I'll have to reduce the step over. So far I'm happy with the tool path. And we can have a look. We have our 16th fillet everywhere. The tool path has done a good job. We rotate around. There is a slight bit of material left here, which means we need to reduce our step over percentage. So I'll close the simulator, go back into my parameters. In my roughing here, I'm going to drop this down to 300, which would be 60%. Regenerate the toolpath, re-simulate it, and save it when I'm happy.